In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. Good evening, everyone. Merry Christmas. Today, uh, we are celebrating a great feast, the birth of baby Jesus. And I want to ask a special pray for Father John O'Neill. Father John O'Neill is affected for the COVID. This, he is our pastor. This, uh, this Mass is offered for, for him, the God, uh, Son, the recovering your health. Okay? Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge all sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. pray. O God, who has made this most sacred night radiant with the splendor of the true light, grant we pray that we who have known the mysteries of his light and on earth may also delight in his gladness in heaven, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Let's be said. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. 
You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing as they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster, you have smashed as on the day of Midian. For every boot that tramped in battle, every cloak rolled in blood, will be burned as fuel for flames. For a child is born to us, a son is given us, Upon his shoulder dominion rests. They name him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father Forever, Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful. From David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains, by judgment and justice, both now and forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The Word of the Lord. from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared, saving all and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age as we await the blessed hope, the appearance of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness 
and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. The word of the Lord. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph too went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region, living in the fields and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today, in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you, who is Christ and Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of heavenly hosts with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The Gospel of the Lord. Today, we are celebrating the Feast of Christmas, the glorious birth of Jesus, our Savior. Every year, we look forward to this celebration because it is a source of great joy for us. Also, because it is an opportunity to reunite as a family. This year, the Christmas is not going to be the same way we are accustomed to because of everything we have been living with this pandemic. However, it is still a reason for joy and hope to celebrate Christmas because the essence of Christmas is that Jesus comes to us to free us from all sadness and anguish, from all pain and suffering. He is our Savior, and we had to give him a place on this day in our family, but above all in our hearts. He is the special guest at this great celebration. Let us now look at some of the words of the gospel that we hear today. 
when Joseph and Mary went to enroll in their hometown of Bethlehem, it was time for Mary to give birth to her son. Joseph and Mary were looking for a room to rest, but they did not find a room. I want us to think about this moment and imagine this scene where then mo the, the mother of the Messiah is rejected, carrying him in her womb. We can think how sad that was, because they did not give Mary a decent place to be born the Savior of the world. We can say, if I had been there, I would have looked for a worthy place for the baby Jesus and his parents. But here there is a difference. The people of that time did not know that who Mary was carrying in her womb was the Savior that they were waiting for so much. But we currently know it. Here, a question appears for us. This Christmas, I prepare a special place for the baby Jesus. Let us really be honest with ourselves. Advent was the time that God gave us to prepare for the arrival of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time has come and we are celebrating Christmas and Jesus wants to find a place for him and not be rejected. Today, let's, let us tell the baby Jesus to come to us, that we await him with great joy and that we want to fill our lives with him. Now, I want us to reflect on the manger, the place where Jesus came to this world, not finding a room. Joseph looked for a place where his son could be born, and he found the manger. This I do not think was a coincidence, but Jesus wanted to be born in that humble place to teach us that he being the Son of God and deserving all the comfort, he wanted to show himself to the world in this humble way. And this was the sign that the angels gave to the shepherds so that they would go to worship the Savior of the world. You will find an infant grab and sudden saddling clothes and lying in a manger. To finish, let's put our eyes on the words that the angel say, says to the shepherds. I proclaim to you good news of great joy. For today, in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you who is Christ and Lord. What does it mean for us that Jesus is our Savior, that he has come to free us from the slavery of sin, to remove the darkness of error because he is the light of the world. He has transformed our worries into hope. He comes to free us from all those things that cause us sadness in our hearts. Let us remember that Christmas, that Christmas is a time to love one another, to reconcile ourselves and let the joy of Christ fill our hearts, to overflow that happiness and share it with others. Today, I ask the baby Jesus 
to bless each of their homes and their families, and that the happiness and joy of Christmas is not just one day, but last every day in our lives. Brothers and sisters, Merry Christmas, everyone. Please stand. Tonight, when we read the Creed and say the Creed before, on this special day, we will kneel at the point where we normally uh, genuflect during the Incarnation. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten on May, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. Please kneel. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the very Mary and became man. Please stand. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory, the Jews of the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection and the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. As we celebrate the birth of Jesus, we rejoice in the goodness of God. We trust we present these needs to our Father in heaven. That the church may joyfully proclaim the birth of our Savior and transform the world through word and deed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That bishops, priests, and deacons who guide God's people may be faithful heralds of the good news of salvation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all those who are away from their loved ones today may be filled with Christmas peace and joy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all families may welcome the Christ child into their homes and experience his blessings and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who grieve for their departed loved ones may be consoled by the promise and joy of our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Father John and all those suffering in any way from the COVID virus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Rose Hutback, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Now, let us pray together the Hail Mary for this pandemic. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord, the Lord is with thee. thee. Blessed art thou among women. women. And blessed, and blessed is the fruit, fruit of thy womb, womb Jesus. Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, pray, pray for our for sinners, sinners, now and in the hour of our death. death. Amen. Amen. Father, we praise you with joy for having sent your Son into the world. Give us grace to be faithful to the gospel we profess. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Bless the Spirit.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the oblation of this day's feast be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray, that through this most holy exchange we may be found in the likeness of Christ, in whom our nature is united to you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the mystery of the world made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as we wrote and we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give light to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, gradually make holy this gift we have brought to you for consecration, that it may become the body and blood of your Son, O Lord Jesus Christ at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for it is in my body, which will be given not for you, In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said a blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for it is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mm -hmm. 
the misery of fate. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. We may, may he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Mary, Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. John and St. James, and with all the saints, on whose constant intersection in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confer in faith and charity your appearing sure on earth with your servant Francis or Pope and David or Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have so much before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Servius' command and for by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our dirty bread and trust our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Lord, Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and gradually and her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray the act of spiritual communion for the people that join us online. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite, unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
small 
Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, that we who are grounded by participation in the feast of our Redeemer's Nativity may through an honorable way of life become worthy of union with him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us say it. Just a couple announcements. The Retirement Fund for Religious is a collection taken up every Christmas for retired sisters, brothers, and priests. This fund helps provide medications, nursing care, and other necessities. We will have baskets in the back of the church and in the overflow areas for this special collection at all of the Christmas Masses. And it is never too late to give to Father John's wish list. There are currently two items on the list. Number one, the digital signs for the church and the school. And then number two, to redo the lights behind the stained glass windows so we can see their beauty at night and during the day. And that is for all of them, if you can look on these sides. Please stand for the blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world, and by that glorious birth has illumined, illumined this most holy night, right far from you the darkness of this, and illumine for hearts with the light of virtue. Amen. Amen. May God, who will that the great joy of his son's saving birth be announced to shepherds by the angel, fill your minds with the gladness he gives and make you heralds of his gospel. Amen. Amen. And may God, who by the incarnation brought together the early and heavenly realm, fill you with the gift of his peace and favor, and may you share with the church in heaven. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of the Almighty God, the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. The Mass has ended. Go forth, glorifying the Lord with your lives. Thanks. Thanks to God.